Um, nothing too much has happened yet, Robert. Again, very similar pawn structure to that last game we saw with Black. Um, very solid, no weaknesses, but this time Black having pawns um, kind of on the sixth rank rather than having committed one in the center. And Magnus, I've seen him employ this before. He's got all of his pieces really centralized. Um, he's going to go for a bit of a clamp, a bit of a bind, and uh, maybe a grind later on. Um, okay, I'm going to ask it again. Who do you prefer in this game early days? I like white just because black does feel a little bit cramped, uh, though I tend to like this d6, e6 pawn structure because I feel like a lot of players, not Magnus Carlsen, not Yana Pomshi, but players who aren't so experienced in these variations, they always want to lash out with f4, f5 as soon as possible, go for a checkmate, try to break open the position, but that has a drawback. If you push a pawn to f5, look at that e5 square, for example, you will not be able to control it with any pawn. So every time you push a pawn, Think about the squares that are left behind. And for now, what Magnus needs to look at is his bishop on c4. It's directly under attack. He's deciding, where does it belong? Can I push my pawn to b3? No, let's just bring the bishop back to b3 to safety. So, David, after I said all that, do you actually think that Magnus has a slight edge? Or do you think that Jan has done everything he needed to to stabilize out of the opening? Yeah, I mean, uh, if it was anyone else, uh, I would probably say it's just totally equal. But uh, I know Magnus loves this exact pawn structure, when, especially when he gets his pawn forward to a5. It might look innocuous here, but for everyone at home, actually controlling enemy squares uh, in the opponent's territory can be extremely useful. b6 will be a launch pad, maybe for white's bishop, maybe later for a white uh, knight. Uh, if a knight ever posts up on that square, it could be really dangerous for black. But uh, yeah, for now, Jan hasn't done anything too drastic, done anything too committal. Feels like he should be fine. Um, but yeah, I would slightly prefer uh, Magnus's cause here. Uh, first, he has a question to answer, uh, a hit on the e4 pawn. But uh, he can deal with this by simply protecting with a pawn. He can even kick back the black queen. Um, either way, choice galore. Um, knowing Magnus, he might even think of bringing his rook across. That black queen is almost trapped. Um, so yeah, this is where things might start heating up, Robert. I was thinking the same. Rook a4 was one of those clever moves that's not subtle at all. Like I'm protecting the e4 pawn and also trying to trap your queen because the queen on c6, that's not a typical square for it. So I don't think Jan was thrilled to recapture with the queen, but he probably didn't like that if the bishop took back on c6, he was probably feeling a little bit passive and that dark square bishop for white would have quickly landed on b6 with tempo. So I do like Magnus' position. I feel like even now bishop b6 does come to mind, but then black plays bishop to d8. Not exactly uh, the most thrilling uh, events there, but bishop a4 will always be in the air. You pointed that move out. Black does need to be careful about that kind of idea. Yeah, Magnus here spending a bit of time for the first relocation in this game. Um, just trying to find uh, a way to maybe get the initiative to start setting those threats, uh, maybe a bit of calculation for the first time. Um, but yeah, I think this is definitely one that will heat up. Um, these types of positions, they never kind of stay too balanced for too long. So um, yeah, maybe want to check back in on a bit later, Robert. Two very strong pa pass pawns here, Robert, pretty much. Yeah, you see Magnus was just able to crash through a big mistake from Yana Pomshi. There was tension. There was a black pawn on d6 that took a pawn on c5, but it allowed white to push the d-pawn, then recapture the c-pawn. And now we look. There's a healthy, protected pass pawn on d6. And David, the worst part for black, there's no b7 to b6 to undermine it. White's pawns have a true clamp on the queen side. Yeah, Black's rooks are paralyzed. Look at this black rook, cannot move. The other black rook stuck um, just in case the white pawn ever advances and Magnus is getting ready to free up his own rooks. Uh, maybe he'll slide across now. Um, there we go. He's threatening to push. He might even come in later on with his rook to d5. Um, black is just stuck here. Shake of the head from Yana Pomnishi. Robert, the endgame maestro, Magnus Carlsen again. And Jan was outplaying Magnus. I sort of peripherally caught a glimpse at this game. And Jan brought his king to the center, was doing everything uh, correct. But then you look at the clock. Both players reaching you know, below 15, 10 seconds. And that's where things started to unravel for Jan. Rookie 7 check. Uh, there's almost a checkmating net coming. So the black king, it's ensnared right now. Yeah, this king has nowhere to go. It will get trapped in the next couple of moves. Rook B2 now looks like a killer threat. Uh, one last trap here, en passant, and uh, okay, Magnus takes the win. Jan resigns. Robert, a turnaround so quickly there.